In this week's video, we're getting ready to put in our full electrical system. The first thing we did was mount our batteries to the ground. Next, we mounted our Renogy solar charge controller, shore power, and the rest of our electrical appliances in our system, including our 60 amp DC to DC charger, our 3000 watt inverter, and our Lynx distributor to connect them all. So Fal just marked our 4 op which is gonna be our battery and our inverter wire. So we're just gonna cut that, stuff this copper bit into there, and then crimp it. And when you cut your wires, by the way, you absolutely need to get cable cutters. See how it's circular in the middle? Um, that really helps keep the wire all together and nice. Here's the really big lug to a 5 16th hole. You can get these lugs and this wire actually on Amazon. Use our little crimping tool. It'll be nice and pressed. Can't pull this off. Next up, we prepped the wires that would connect to our batteries and our inverter. You can see us heat shrink them here too. These were our only 4O or 4 aught wires that would be used. Here you can see one of our finished wires fitting perfectly in between our battery terminal. Alrighty, so we just got our quarter inch copper bar at six inches long. We're going to be coming off our Lynx distributor and we're going to have our shunt here basically tell us how much power we have in our battery and then we're going to have our master kill switch coming off the positive. First, we drilled four holes equidistantly in our copper bar. We started them with a smaller bit, but then made them larger with a bigger bit. Don't worry, copper is pretty soft and easy to work with. Next, we cut the copper bar in half. We used the copper bar to connect our Lynx distributor to our master kill switch, which will eventually be connected to the positive terminal of our battery bank. We used the other half of the copper bar to connect the Lynx distributor to the shunt, which will later be connected to the negative terminal of our battery bank. Then we prepared the wires that connected the master kill switch and the shunt to the batteries. As you can see, we had to widen the holes on the lugs with a drill. Please use caution if you do this. This can be avoided by getting larger hold lugs on Amazon. Next, we attached the one side of the wire to the master kill switch since its terminals were on the back. After these parts were all assembled, we mounted these pieces to the wall. Once they're mounted, you can see us measuring out the black wire to attach from the shunt to the negative terminal of the batteries. Remember that our batteries are connected in parallel, so we will only connect to one positive terminal and one negative terminal on the battery bank. Our positive terminal, where we will connect the master kill switch wire, is in the back right hand corner and the negative is in the front left hand corner if you're looking at our batteries from the back door of the van. You'll see us start to prepare and measure the wires for our inverter. And we have a 3000 watt energy inverter. This is rated for 4 watt. We are figuring out that these holes do not align because the head off the lug is too big. We're going to try to side grind it. We have cut this one for our inverter and this hole for our Lynx distributor. Moment of truth. Here we are going through the same process of measuring and cutting for the inverter. We already have the two wires connected to the input side of the inverter, so now we just have to see how long they must be to fit into our links. Our links helps our batteries distribute power to our many appliances. Next, you see us going through the same wire prep process for our Renogy 60 amp DC to DC charger. For this appliance, we use 4 AUG stranded marine wire, which we have linked below. For a full step-by-step -step video about how we did our 60 amp DC to DC Renogy charger, check out that video that we'll have linked in the top right corner here above. Now you see us attaching this 4 AUG wire to the input side of the DC to DC charger. We mostly used a screwdriver and drill to tighten these bolts. As you can see, it was easier for us to attach lugs on one side of the wire, connect it, and then measure and finish the wire once it was connected to the appliance. You will now see us start to attach the DC to DC input wires to the Lynx distributor. This is our Lynx distributor, which is basically taking the place of our bus bar and where we're gonna put all of our fuses for our large appliances. What you do is you take off the washer, the lock washer and turn the nut. There we go. And we're putting on the negative first. So the negative goes on the on the back side and then there's this plastic piece and the positive goes here. It goes wire lug, washer, lock washer, and then nut. The plastic thing goes up and now we're gonna work on getting the positive wire on with this guy. But we also have to put on our fuse. There's the positive bus bar here and then there's this guy and this is where our fuse is gonna go, just like this one. So now that we have off the washer, lock washer, and nut here, we're going to first put on the fuse. Next, we're gonna put on the wire lug. And we're gonna put on the washer for both of them. Then the lock washer. And then the nuts. Nice, and then we're just gonna tighten them down with our 13 millimeter socket wrench. The Lynx distributor is the brain of the operation and connects all of our appliances, both producers and consumers, to the batteries. Firstly, we wanted to add a shunt for our battery monitor as well as a master kill switch for our system. We added these to our Lynx through the addition of a homemade copper bus bar on both the positive, red, and negative, black terminals of the Lynx. 
Between the positive terminal of the links and the positive terminal of the batteries, we added in the master kill switch. This allows us to turn off all power to our appliances at one point. Between the negative terminal of the links and the negative terminal of the battery bank, we added our shunt. The shunt is attached to the battery monitor, the Victron BMV712, which allows us to easily see the charge on our batteries. In the port next to where the battery monitor attaches, you will see a small red wire that connects to the positive bus bar of the links distributor. This brings power to the battery monitor. Also coming off of the negative terminal of the links distributor is our ground wire that we connect directly to the chassis. This was also 4.0 wire, and to connect it, we scrubbed off the paint of the van right around a hole where a bolt would fit in and added the ground there. Lastly, there are four ports on the Lynx distributor where we added our four different appliances. The first port was for our 60 amp DC to DC charger. We attached this appliance to the Lynx distributor with 4 AUG wire, different and much smaller than 4.0 or 4 aught. We used an 80 amp fuse for this appliance in the Lynx. The second appliance was the Artera distribution panel, which was connected with 6 AUG wire to the Lynx. We used an 100 amp fuse for this appliance. The third appliance connected was our 40 amp MPPT charge controller, connected with 8 AUG wire to the Lynx. We used a 60 amp fuse for this appliance. The fourth and last appliance connected to our 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, connected to the Lynx with 4 O or 4 aught wire. We used a 300 amp fuse for this appliance in the Lynx. Basically, this is our brain that is taking consumers and our producers here. This is for our solar, so it's going to come down into this and then basically feed into here to charge our batteries. In order to power the MPPT controller, it needs to be connected to both the positive and negative wires from the solar panels, as well as the positive and negative wires from the links. Because we got the 400 amp premium solar kit from Renergy, it came with an ANL fuse, not pictured here, which went in the positive battery line. We also decided to put a kill switch in the positive line of the solar panels, so if we needed to do any maintenance, we would have less chance of shock from trickle charge. Lastly, we have a Bluetooth solar monitor that plugs in phone jack style. While we do have this, we almost never use it. If you want further details, check out the solar video above. We also have our DC to DC, which is going in our first fuse port area, and that's gonna help to charge the batteries whenever we're running our engine. The DC to DC charger has both an input and an output side. The output side is attached to the Lynx distributor. The input side is attached to the starter battery with 4 AUG wire. For more information about how to connect the DC to DC to the starter battery, see the video above. We don't have it hooked in yet, but that's gonna be our distribution panel. That's basically taking all of our AC wire, which is the gray over here, and then it also takes our DC wire, which is all the white. That's for things like lights, fans, other miscellaneous things like, yeah, your water pump. Here you'll see us installing our Blue Sea Systems 300 amp terminal fuse on the positive terminal of our battery bank. We wanted to use a reputable brand fuse because we wanted to make sure that we protected the batteries in the wire with such high current, as well as reducing the risk of electrical fires. The rest of what you see us doing in this video is attaching the batteries in parallel with the small wires that we created in the beginning. We decided to hook up our batteries last because we didn't want to run any risk of shock while wiring our appliances. We have three 100 amp hour 12 volt Renogy lithium batteries wired in parallel. Wiring the batteries in parallel adds the overall amp hour capacity, while wiring the batteries in series adds the overall voltage. On the positive terminal of our battery, we added a Blue Sea Systems 300 amp terminal fuse. The terminals of the batteries were connected with 4O or 4 aught wire. This piece of equipment was not shown in our video, and we actually haven't used it at all because our solar and DC to DC are sufficient for our needs. We decided to get the NOCO Genius 10 Pro 10x1, which is different than the one shown here. In theory, we could plug in our shore power and it would charge the batteries. I am really glad actually that we have the Lynx distributor. I think it really does make it look so much cleaner. There it is. <laughs> we are putting the distribution panel in. This will be for all of our AC wire. Or this is DC, whoops, and AC, which is, which is the Romex. Basically a fuse box and a breaker panel all in one. Val's been working on this since I've been gone. Since you've been gone. I put it all in red electricals. Since you've been gone. Yeah, yeah. Here are the two DC wires that come from our Lynx distributor and will innervate our Artera distribution panel on the DC fuse side. Once the two wires were prepped, they were secured into the top of the green chip you see here. 
Now we are working on bringing in each wire for each small DC appliance we have, such as our pump, our lights, our fans, etc. These are our white 4 AUG pre-wiring wires, which you can find out more about in our pre-wiring video, also attached in the right-hand corner. We attached each red wire to the right side of the green chip, as you see, and each black wire went on the left side towards the bottom and behind of the green chip. Here are all of the fuses that will go into the Artera distribution panel on the DC fuse panel side. These are automotive ATC fuses. You can get them on Amazon or at your local automotive store. In order to size the fuses for each appliance, you have to find the current draw of each appliance measured in amps, and then multiply that number by a 1.25 to 1.5 factor. This should be the approximate size of your fuse. Now you'll see us add in the fuses to each appliance. Make sure to take careful notes of which appliance is wired where and what the fuse size should be. There is a place to label this on the Artera distribution panel. Okay, so the fuses are in. Now we are about to do this side over here for our breakers. That's going to be the AC side. Got about nine inches on the side that's gonna go into the distribution panel, anywhere from four to six to the side that's gonna go into the inverter. We're gonna have some ball guys. Uh, they are called spade and this will be the lifeline to our distribution panel. Here you see us putting the wires into the AC output side of the inverter. Neutral is white, green is ground, black is live. We used a screwdriver to tighten all of these connections. The last piece of equipment we have hooked up in our electrical setup is our Renogy 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, not the inverter charger. As stated before, the inverter on the input side is attached to the links via 4O wire. On the output side, we use 10-3 stranded marine wire and use this to attach to the Artera distribution panel to give it power on the AC side. This powered all of our AC appliances, such as our outlets. We also used an extension plug-in, which we plugged directly into the inverter. Now we are going to start to wire the AC side of the distribution panel. As you can see, the white, green, and black wires have gone through the hole in the back, where they are connected to the inverter. The white wire gets attached to the front of the panel, the green, which is the ground, goes behind that, and the black, which is the live wire, gets attached to the breakers. This is going to be the main breaker, the one that is attached directly to the inverter and controls power to all AC devices. Now you will start to see us bring through each piece of Romex. These will be attached to the breaker panel in the same way as the original three wires, white in the front, ground in the back, and black in the breaker itself. Lastly, you will see us put on the cover to the panel where every breaker and fuse is labeled accordingly. The Artera distribution panel takes all of our pre-wiring wires, both AC and DC, and acts as both a DC fuse panel and an AC breaker box. For the AC side, we ended up using a 30 amp main breaker and a 20 amp non-main breaker. On the diagram, all of the gray text are for our AC appliances and all the blue text is for our DC appliances. Oh, it has a green light. It's charging. Yeah? <sighs> yeah, it's charging. And we will get all the rest of the outlets connected to our inverter so we can use ones like this instead of a direct plug-in to the inverter. Alrighty, and here is the vertical view of our entire electrical system. You can see everything from inverter to our consumers, producers, batteries, and wiring. If you made it this far to our electrical video, we greatly appreciate you and really hope you will give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks, and stay tuned for our next fan build videos.